Hey everybody, Mike B back here with another latest acquisition video. Um, I got this along with the uh, Leder Schütze mask uh, last week from the same person. Keith, if you're watching, thanks again. Um, as you guys know, helmets are my thing. I love them. I am obsessed with them. And German Stahlhelmer from World War One is no exception. Um, so anyway, I worked out a trade with Keith for the... Well, I paid for the gas mask, but I worked out a trade for the shell that was mutually beneficial. We both got what we wanted, and I'm really happy to have this in my collection now. So what we've got here is a size 64 centimeter shell. You can tell by the uh, the steps on the vent lugs right there versus the size 66s that you've seen that I have that are just kind of straight and don't have the step. Uh, I'll make a video on why that is, and they're different on the different size shells. But um, I thought I already made one a while back, but I guess I didn't. So I'll explain why those are like that and different different shells. But anyway, I don't actually have an original 64 in my collection. Oh wait, now I do. All right, because <laughs> I only had two 66s because I wanted to get them that I could wear. But I wanted a 64 as an example of the stepped lugs and just kind of a different a different size to show how you know a few different sizes were made, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's a Stahlhelm. Why am I not going to take it? So anyway, this is an M17. Well, it's an M16 shell, but it's got a an M17 liner in it, so it's got the steel band. You can see that uh, the leather is the first or the front band or front pad is missing, and the last or the last two remaining are kind of in rough shape. Somebody made it like a makeshift hanging strap out of a shoelace and a coat hanger thing that's fashioned to kind of fit over this other post. I don't know what the hell is going on with that. But here's the original chin strap um, thing, the hook, what you want to call it. So I'll get up here and I'll show you. Hopefully up in the camera, it'll, it'll pick this up. I'll kind of step over here. We've got uh, BF64. Uh, BF was the make, manufacturer um, FC Bellinger in uh, Fulda, Germany. They were one of the, what they call the big three in the First World War that produced the Stahlhelm. So it's not rare by any means, the manufacturer, but I don't care about that because all of these are rare now. Um, but yeah, so that's the manufacturer mark. I kind of had to remove some of the patina. Well, not remove it. I just used my finger and kind of scraped it. Sorry about the shaky camera. The table's kind of wobbly and crappy. Anyway, so yeah, this is a nice example of just a solid Stahlhelm. What sucks though a little bit and what I'm kind of uh, torn on is the fact that there is a lot of kind of rust and patina on it, which is fine because it's a hundred and something years old, but I'm wondering if I should restore it like my other helmets or just keep this as an original like condition example. I don't know. I'm not going to be wearing it, so I don't know if I really want to restore it, but a 64 was like the most common size shell, so it would be kind of cool to have a restored example with a uh, nice reproduction M17 liner in it and a leather chin strap. And then I'd have an example of a bunch of different kinds of liner setups and whatever. Anyway, comment below with what you think I should do, because um, actually I'm torn on this one as well. Um, I'm leaning towards just kind of just leaving it, but again, the paint is pretty much all just covered with patina now. And even if I were to kind of brush it, I don't think the paint job would still be kind of there. So it's kind of interesting on this one. If you can see that the split pin is kind of a thicker one in the front, thick one in the back, how it's supposed to be, and then a thin one up here. Usually you'd have two thin ones, one there and one there, but they must have uh, screwed up or something or just use that as an improvisation and use uh, two of the thicker split pins instead of um, two of the thinner ones and one of the thicker. It's kind of interesting on this. Um, there's really nothing else remarkable about this except for the fact that it's cool. And uh, yeah, it's it's very interesting to find an original M1917. The 16s are harder because they rotted, which is why they went to the 17 liner band. But um, yeah, overall solid example. I really like these things. They really or like the most influential helmet of modern times, I would say, because this went on to influence the World War II designs and whatever, and like I said in the other videos, um, it's really good quality. One thing that you can tell, like if this thing was in great shape, right, I'd be a little bit weary, but you can tell that the, the rim is really kind of a smooth fold underneath. It's not really shoddy and, and uneven and thicker in some spots. That's a typical indicator of good German craftsmanship. They were really particular about their items. So, and then the overall shape of the, the Stahlhelm, right? 
you cannot reproduce it. Like people have tried. They, there's some repros that come close, but then they'll have the vent lugs like down here or something, and they just they don't look right. So you're really not going to get a good reproduction as of this date, you know, 2019 February, which is why I like getting originals because they're just a solid piece of history and they're really not able to be reproduced. So yeah, that's really all I've got on this. It's a newer acquisition. Um, I know you guys like the Roar One stuff, specifically Stahlhelma. So yeah, that's why I decided to share this video with you and kind of share my newest acquisition. I'm very, very, very happy to have gotten this. Um, again, my collection is always growing and this is one of those opportunities that I just kind of couldn't let pass by and glad I didn't. So yeah, I ended up with a um, Lederschutz Maske and a Stahlhelm out of a deal that, or out of a day that just kind of started normal and then uh, somebody kind of walked into the store when I was there shipping stuff and we started talking and worked out some trades. So there are still, there are still things like this that can happen guys. So don't be totally hopeless and think you have to pay, you know, seven, 800 bucks for one of these because somebody on eBay wants that. So anyway, I'll stop rambling. I'm just pretty happy to have this good, solid example. Let me know in the comments what you think. Should I restore this? You know, get the get the, get everything smoothed out, and then um, uh, kind of do the boiled in seed oil, olive drab, dark olive drab, kind of duck hunter green, and then get a repro liner. Or should I just leave it as is as, as an example in my collection? Again, I'm leaning towards leaving it. What do you guys think? Anyway, hopefully I can get more of these as time goes on. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the notification bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. I've been trying to make more content lately and I think I've been doing all right with that. A few videos a week. Um, and yeah, it's, I haven't been getting a lot of new stuff lately, but this is an exception. So I figured I'd make a video and share this with you guys. So yeah, thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you on the next video.